I would like to introduce our first Berkeley Lab scientist, Christine Pearson, who's going to talk about a Google for Materials. Please welcome her warmly. Thank you. Jeff, thanks, thanks so much. Um, it's a pleasure and an honor to be here. Um, I'm going to be talking about a Google for Materials. And why would we want that? Um, I happen to think that materials enable society and they change the way we do things. There's a reason we call our ages after materials, the Iron Age, the Bronze Age. Uh, our own communication age is only possible because we found materials that can transmit signals for huge long distances without being perturbed, without changing the way they look. And I've added some other examples here. We today build bridges and airplanes out of carbon fiber composite, uh, which is, makes them lighter, cheaper, and they last longer. Uh, one of my favorite examples are nylons. Um, we came up with them because we wanted to make lighter and more durable parachutes. But of course, DuPont realized they were sitting on a gold mine. Um, so how do we come up with new materials? How do we come up with things that make these amazing changes to society and that we can enable new technologies and even societal changes? Well, there's the Edison style. Edison, in the late 19th century, um, tried to come up with a filament for the light bulb that he had invented. And he painstakingly tried 3,000 materials over years to come up with the best one. Um, he didn't. The one that we use today in the old kind of style light bulbs, tungsten, wasn't among those 3,000 materials. So he suggested carbon, carbon coming from bamboo. And because, because that wasn't in the test set, he just couldn't come up with it. So that's the Edisonian approach, the tra traditional approach of basically trying everything you can lay your hands on. Hollywood style. <laughs> How does Tony Stark come up with a new material? I would love to do this. Um, he basically had Jarvis render the periodic table, and he's so smart, he just picks out the best elements. <laughs> and he, um, he then he sort of synthesizes it in his hands or in the computer, <laughs> throws it off to check for biological compatibility. Isn't that amazing? In about 10 seconds. I hate to tell you guys, but we're closer to Edison than we are to Tony Stark. Um, reality check is that it takes about 18 years from the time a material is discovered in the lab, a new material, to being commercially su successful. And that's because there's always something wrong with materials. Always, there's always a weak link that we have to engineer around or fix. But we don't have this kind of time. For the things we care about, you know, better photovoltaics, better solar panels, better batteries, we can't wait 18 years and we don't even have the new materials. So how can we make this better? Well, this is where I come in. I'm a theorist. I, do, I make materials in the computer. So I'm, I'm hedging towards Tony Stark, but I'm not quite there yet. And I exist because clever people like Schrodinger um, and computers can enable us to actually predict how materials work, never making them, just simulating it in the computer. And this is actually a quantum mechanical simulation for a real material where ions move. And this is a super fast ionic conductor. This, could, this is a material that could enable our lithium ion batteries to become a lot safer because it would have a solid state electrolyte and not one that burns. That's one computer. If I had NERSC, if I had a whole supercomputing center at my disposal, I could predict materials, I could predict properties for thousands of materials per week. Imagine now suddenly Edison throwing his 3,000 at me, I could crunch through that in a week. He took years to do it. So this is how two amazing things, the, the ability to solve the laws of physics and our computers enable us to actually screen materials in silico. And I wouldn't be standing here if it hadn't actually worked or if I didn't believe in it to the point where I've seen it work. In 2004, 2005, I was at MIT, and I was working as part of a team um, to come up with a new uh, cathode for these little rechargeable alkaline batteries, which I bet is in this little dude, for example, or non-rechargeables. Um, we screened over 100,000 materials in the computer. 1,500 of them had better energy 
than what is currently used, but only 200 had even a chance of making it in the very corrosive electrolyte. That became the weak link. That was the hard property to screen on. That was just the beginning. Since then, we've screened and found novel classes of lithium ion battery electrodes. Uh, we've come up with um, improved transparent conductors, which is one of the materials that go into our um, solar panels to make them cheaper and better. But where do we want to go? And this is where I turn to the children in, in, the, in the audience. Um, when I, I have two daughters, one in middle school and one in elementary school, and if I ask them, give me a good battery material, come up with a material for me that is good for batteries, what would they do? They'd Google it, right? <laughs> that's, that's, you know, that's the truth for you. You ask children. Um, and that's if you ask an elementary school kid or, or somebody in middle school, but if they know a little bit more, they've gone to college or something and they know something about batteries, then they might go something like this. Well, I need a material that has a specific voltage window and it needs to be stable and needs to have good lithium ion mobility. Google will not give a right answer to this. <laughs> so we need to do better than that. Um, and me and um, my, my colleague at MIT, We've launched something that is the beginning of a Google for materials. We've put all of those calculations that we've used to screen for novel battery materials online, free to use for anyone who wants to use them. Um, and there's more than 30,000 materials computed for different applications. You can use it for photovoltaics. You can use it for batteries. And we hope that people will use them, um, that people who come up with better materials for tomorrow will use resources like this where you can actually, in a search interface, put in those materials properties and there will come a list of materials that actually fit those criteria. But this is just the beginning and I'm hoping that other people will do this too. We're a lot better at sharing our experiences from restaurants on Yelp than we are about giving our um, research results freely on the web. So this is my challenge to every scientist in the world that we should all be doing this. We should all be putting our research online for other people to use. So. I suppose I'm coming very close to my, uh, my, my eight minutes, um, and I'll just leave you with this, a materials, a materials Google, and hopefully have amazing materials for the future to solve our energy problems and others. Thank you.